just not going to play around this week. Just got to get into something very sharpish. Because what I don't like, James, I don't like flack. I don't like shit coming back to me because of something my friend has done. Can I just not get the feedback from your poor opinion? If you're giving an whoa. opinion... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, the boy, the boy, the <laughs> well, we'll get into that. Poor opinion. We'll get into it. What I poor think opinion. is a poor opinion. But what I want to do is I'm just leisurely. I'm just like, I haven't tweeted anything controversial today. So if I want to go on my Twitter feed, I don't want to see abuse, right? Sometimes if I tweet something that's going to wind people up. You know it's coming. You know the waves. I know coming. it's coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know. Like that, <laughs> it's fine. Like that. Yeah, it's like, it's like, it's um, like boxing. You know, when like they, say, they say basically it's the one you don't see. Like, so if you, if you can you see, see a punch coming and you sort of tense up a bit, you can take that. Yeah. Punch, but it's the one you yeah, don't see coming. Yeah, when the waves coming, coming I, I get the rubber dinghy out, right? So it's fine. I know what's coming. This, I was just browsing along and went, all right, mate, um, can you have a word with your fucking mate, please? Because um, <laughs> he said, said said something bad about Tottenham. Yeah. Mate, your mate's just fucking, he said, look, look what your mate's saying. Right, like the key here, the key thing here, and this is really not about you, Jim, anymore. It's about the people tweeting me. Yeah, yeah. Who, mate, are de- who are deluded. Is that what you're going on to say? No, they're not deluded. They're correcting their, their irritation we'll at your thumb now. We'll get there. Cool. But yeah, last week, Jim, I just want to ask you, I, I just if you feel like it's a good opinion. I, don't, I didn't watch the video. I couldn't bring myself to watch it, actually. But uh, you've, got, um, you've got a thumbnail, which is about a video about how to fix Man United. Like, who gives a shit? Who wants to fix well, Man United rebuild, anyway? Rebuild. Aren't, aren't rebuild. they better broken for everybody? Well, I would say, there, there, are, I would say right. there are millions of fans around the world who seem to be quite keen on them. Yeah, and these are the idiots who chose to support Manchester United because they're really good. They deserve everything they get, every single bit of pain they're feeling. They deserve because once they chose Manchester United because they were the best team. This is football. Deal yeah, with it, right? Yeah. Which which oh, links us perfectly everyone. onto um, sat the video with Sam. This <laughs> is and this is the thing, right? This is the thing is they just they simply think because they chose to support Manchester I'm not talking about all Man United fans right the answers that I'm talking I got about the Man United fans who can't quite deal with the situation they find themselves in they simply think because once in the past they chose to support the best team in the land now that things aren't going their way and they'll never be that club again in the same way that they were growing up that they're going to have a hissy fit about it this is football unfortunately this is the club you are right now um so it's irritating when you hear people like Sam Peoples and you're eye washing, you prick. I saw you. Um, uh, and can I, um, this is, and this is a conversation I've been having for many years with him, by the way. Uh, Flav, can I just get you on a video and talk about Harry Kane wanting to join in Manchester United? No, I won't go on your video about Man- Manchester United, uh, about Kane joining United or Pochettino joining Man United. These are requests, direct requests from Sam Peoples to me in the past. Right. Now he's going, well, hang on, he looks quite good. Last year, wouldn't even look at him. Didn't even know his uh, name. Right. Couldn't spell it. Right. But because he's doing well at Spurs, Man United fans, I don't. I'm not talking about on mass, but a few of them are thinking, "Oh, maybe, maybe we can get past the Coglu." Unfortunately, unfortunately, things. <laughs> please don't let this come back and bite me in the ass. <laughs> unfortunately, Tottenham ain't that club anymore. <laughs> <laughs> bom bom bom. And the thing is, is some people might look at Postacoglu and look, well, he jumped ship from Celtic, didn't he? And he jumped ship from Bisbon War. And he went to Japan pretty quickly. What was that Bisbon War? War. <laughs> war. Bisbon War. War. Jonathan. It was a bit Jonathan Ross, wasn't it? Mm. Uh, yeah, Brisbane Raw. Um, but he's he. What else could he do at Celtic? He was done at Celtic, right? He was. He, he'd won five cups out of six possible he'd won the treble best football circuit I've ever seen what else is he going to do win another treble it was time for him to move on to Spurs and he's got a lot a lot of achieving to do <laughs> yeah he doesn't yeah. jump ship just because Sam Peoples batters his eyelids and don't get me wrong <clears throat> there's a lot a lot of things I would like to do to Sam Peoples <laughs> sexually yeah. but because of his eye, he's battering his eye well, you've, you've already you've nearly come to blows with him before and I don't mean sexually. You nearly, you nearly that was fisticuffs. Well, was very, it was a long, we were day. Was we were a long both, day. Very drunk. It was a long yeah. day. We were both very tight. <laughs> um, but Jim, I, I'm surprised at you. 
<laughs> I love that. That's I'd love to use that more. Like to go sort of say something and then be able to go sort of get get rid of it. Go. No, <laughs> it was a long day. We don't <laughs> everyone to be drinking. It's a long day. But, but the thing is, a lot there is a lot that a long day will do to a man and make him behave in a way that he wouldn't if he was fresh in the morning. Especially if you got to spend twelve hours with Sam Peoples, who's also getting drunk. He becomes a wildly car. obnoxious once he is drunk. <laughs> I love you, Sam. I, I like no, you know. I love you two bits, but you are insufferable <laughs> when you're drunk trust me you. i was i was far far more sober than you on that day anyway the point that you're making is well are you've been i i i apologize to absolutely no i apologize to you for your fan base it's a shame i didn't, some I didn't of like your it, fan i didn't base, like either jim i didn't like what, either. What, I, so I, basically what we're talking about is in a video i said and this is the thing right First of all, and people seeing things they don't want to see. Right, someone in the, someone in the, one of our beloved patrons, right? Will Starling says, sell Ange, sell Ange. No, that is not the thumbnail. Look at the thumbnail. The thumbnail says, hire Ange, hire. No one's selling anyone. So again, you're getting angry about things that, are, that you don't need to be angry about. Second of all, right? Second of all, what I said in the video was... And if you take a breath for a second, you will see the compliment that is within what I'm saying, right? And what I'm saying within that podcast was that Man United are screaming about this identity that they had and want again, right? They've had several managers who haven't been up to it. They've got a manager who, in my opinion, and yours, isn't really up to it. And you've got a new ownership that are going to have people that are going to have their own ideas. And when they have their own ideas, they will want their own manager to utterly fit that blueprint, right? So then when you're trying to push all that together, you need a manager that has dealt with a historic club, has dealt with having to win trophies, has plays brilliant football, isn't, isn't 32 and therefore is going to struggle under the spotlight of it and needs to be able to take a club that it ha that has been at it probably its lowest ebb in terms of morale for a long long time and take them somewhere else ideally quite quickly now so if you're thinking about all of that and again i think someone with a bit of gravitas is probably quite important for man united as well and poster coglu is a fantastic fit that i don't think there are many other managers I can't think of another manager, which is what I said in the video, is why I keep coming back to him, is I can't see another manager that would be a better fit for Man United in terms of the identity that they want and also someone... And people going, well, you want Jurgen Klopp, you're not going to get him. This is not that. You said you said on this podcast, and Tottenham fans say all the time, goes, oh, we're, this is just an embryonic stage. We're, a, we're still, a, you know, we're still sort of getting somewhere, right? So... Again, when it comes to Man United and Tottenham, and I appreciate the annoyance at you having great players and them getting picked by other people, but there's a reason why Teddy Sheringham and Michael Carrick and Berbatov, and I get it, it's a different era. About a long, long time ago. Long, long time ago. But the the link. Kane is, didn't go there. Kane didn't go there, and that's I think I've, there's I've seen so, go there. right. And that's fine. And and Jordan, the thing in all of this, which I didn't say, and you can't say everything, is in terms of him not going. There's a few things. One, one, he's he's a Liverpool fan. He said that he's a Liverpool fan. That makes it quite awkward. Does it make it awkward enough for them to not get him or him not take the job? That's a different conversation. The the other thing is that uh, Daniel Levy has been quite consistent within this era where he doesn't like his prized assets going to another club. I mean, that said, you've got people like Carl Walker who, who's gone to wherever he wants to go to, right? And so, again, it might not be possible, but to say it's not something that Man United should want and it's, yeah, not, want and it. it's not even an actual conversation is, yeah. is you're like the jump, the jump from Tottenham fans to think you're like this like seismic club now. You're not bigger than Man United. I know Man United in a bad place. You are not a bigger club than Man United. Are you better run no. right now? Absolutely. But they've got new ownership. They still bring in over like a hundred and something dropped today, actually. They're still they still bring in like well over a hundred million pounds more than you lot. And yep. they've got 
12 times the history of Man United. So, like, Tottenham. So, you're, so yeah. But you're, you're correct, James, in all that. I'm not saying Spurs are a better, uh, a, a bigger club than Man United. Of course not. Although, you know, revenue, you mentioned revenue there, James. That's really interesting because that is important revenue on, on, the, on deciding how big a club is. And I just right. on that same news that you mentioned about Manchester United doing 100 million pounds more in revenue than Tottenham. Tottenham are actually the richest club in London. I'll go the biggest club in London because we make the most money. If we want to go by that metric. Right. Um, so, so not bigger so, than Man United then, despite Man United's current woes. No, but but okay. the, the, I would I would argue that the pull that Man United has right now is completely about their legacy and nothing to do with the football club they are. They've got a stadium that's falling down, a training ground that isn't fit for purpose, and years of uh, glazers that have, have decimated um, the infrastructure at the football club. You go to Spurs and it's a state-of-the-art stadium, state-of-the-art training ground, any and, and what will become a club that can match any other spending in the Premier League in the, in, in the next five years, right? If you're Postacoglu in this instance, six months into your four-year deal, Manchester United have absolutely zero hope of, of attracting him. Zero. None. Not it zero. would never happen. Not zero. How Not are they going to do it? What I, I, could po- Manchester United possibly offer him that Tottenham can't? This Bearing in mind his is reputation. Man United. Is, the, yeah, yeah, it's not enough. Not enough. I think, do you know what? I think, I'm not saying, see, that's again in the video. I didn't say he would go. I didn't say Mate, he would go. James, most of you didn't, probably didn't watch the video. It was just fun now. <laughs> right, right. It was right, just fun now. Okay. Well, like, right. <laughs> well, you, there's everything you, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, and I'm absolutely, I, I'm, I, I talk with the utmost confidence that what you said was measured and right. <laughs> I'm sure that it was a thumbnail that fucked everyone off. I think. Right. Okay. So you're just angry at a thumbnail, which is, but the thumbnail is the thumbnail is is correct as well. Like that's what I'm Have saying. You... I'm saying go get him. Can you get him? Different question. Absolutely no. different question. Absolutely. What they question. should do? Why don't they go to Sport and Lisbon? Get Almerin. That's what they should be thinking right now. <sighs> See, this is the thing. When I in that video, when I then look at other managers, like the top three managers, I think it's Almerin. I think it's um. It's uh, Potter and it's Lopetegui. And all of those just scream danger to me. Lopetegui Whereas, doesn't. I think he's big enough. Yeah. He, can, he can cope with that job. Well, well they More, struggle uh, yeah, with the Real Madrid job, yeah, struggle yeah. with the Spain job, but I, I think he's clearly a good manager. Politically, right? though, politically he struggled with those those jobs. The, the issue with the Spain job was because he didn't he take the Real Madrid job before he, while he was still coach and stuff like that. Yeah, but, that's true. I think out of the three, you go Almerin. Young, fresh, exciting. You're going to change the... You just Is he too young, though? Is that what you're saying? The job's so too my, big th- my thing is... That's the thing. That's why I keep coming back to Postacoglu. This, again, is my point with Postacoglu. Oh, no, Postacoglu, he's not available. Okay, well, I, I do want to talk about that because I think that's interesting. The, the, the reason I keep coming back to him is I think you need an elder statesman here. I don't think a younger guy... It just feels too big. It feels too... Big. Like, a bit like... Bit like Jurgen Klopp, because that's what I said in the video, um, provocatively, I guess. But I absolutely stand by it. Man United want to be Liverpool. Like, if you're talking about the identity of how they want to play, I put this tweet out. It goes yeah. fast pace, fast pace, fast pace. We don't want to play with Pep. Fast pace, fast pace. Right. So you want to be Liverpool. So if you want to be Liverpool. You need to get a manager who has done enough, but has still got you know some road left, we, I know and what is, you're a, saying, is a James. proper man. Weird, weirdly. They're in a situation where their pool of managers they can they can effectively employ is quite small compared to every totally, other club. Totally, totally. Because you're right, they need the, someone with the gravitas to manage a club of that size, which remains probably the second biggest club in the world behind Real Madrid. Yeah. Even despite all of the shit football they've had for so long, they need that manager with the gravitas to deal with the players, to deal with the expectation. So that takes out people like Almiron who, uh, who probably need another big club in between. To do it, Posta Coglu, if he wasn't, if he was still at Celtic, which is the sort of point where he owes us a degree of debt going forward, because we were the massive club that 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 gave him the opportunity. Anyway, that's besides the point. Um, they do. You're right, Jim. This pool of managers is relatively small. You're talking mm. big, big names that they've got to be not past the hit, part over the hill, and they've got to have these fresh and enthusiastic ideas in order to rejuvenate what Manchester United are right now. Like, so beloved patrons, hopefully you can see right now who 
so I just typed in best managers in the world. <laughs> and so if you have a look there, who like who is a good fit? Emery. Emery's a great fit. So, and I guess Villa fans would be shouting the same kind of thing of, oh no, look, we're going somewhere. And I, I get it and I appreciate it. And coming on to that conversation of like, would he go? If I'm, if I'm Ange, I think I would, I would, I would bat some eyelids. I think I would flirt a little bit privately and go, but I wouldn't leave Spurs because I think you've got such a great thing there and you've got such status within that club right now yeah that it's a bit like it's a bit like real madrid when they're kind of all over the place and they lose manager lose manager lose manager lose manager it was one of those ones where they, people couldn't sort of turn it down but actually it would have been better off just leaving it but it's one of those ones where like can you actually turn that job down now man united i don't think is at that rung right now but they will they will return like they're utterly going to return so if you're trying to be clever and maybe that's a dangerous thing. But like, if you're trying to be clever, you have so much exciting elements at Tottenham right now that it is just it, it, not worth... It's not worth it for me right now. But you, it's definitely... He would definitely want to have the conversation. Don't you think? He, if he does well at Spurs, i.e. winning... I mean, not six months after... Like, no, I don't, no. I don't think at this stage... I think if he wins something or does well at Spurs for three years, two or three years, then the world is his oyster, right? He can go anywhere he wants in the same way, you know, and I, and I genuinely think, and this is, you know, I've said this so many times in my life, so it probably doesn't mean, it means very little, but I genuinely think we're going to be challenging for titles in the next year or so. Next season, this season, we, we're in the conversation. I think we're too far behind now, but, but. It's all know, down we, to we, having him get there, the though, right? Like, like it's about him, right? Which again, I think is a reason why if I was Ange, I would stay. I would absolutely stay because it's so. What, I think it's what, so exciting. You could be such a hero there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's but it's, it's not saying he wins and then doesn't then doesn't go up to Manchester United. I don't think that he probably wants to look at his career. He wants to look back and go, managing Man United and doing success, having success with them would be the kind of cherry on the top. I think he bypasses Manchester United completely, and I think he ends up at. Real Madrid, Barcelona, that kind of thing. Really? Like Barcelona is perfect. Yeah. I just, I, I'm, maybe I'm over, what, what, hang on, why, so Man United and, I think I'm just, comparable to, you, no, 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 I get it. No, I, I think, look, I just think it's, uh, I think it's one where, you know, obviously speaking the language. You're like that. years down the line. Yeah, maybe. You're years down the line. Not, I not love now. that world. I love that world that you, and this is why, I think this is why I've always got a soft spot for Ange. It's like, I want people to be able to, I'm happy with people proving people wrong. I think it's great. Like, I think we need to see as much of it as possible. So if there's a world in two years time where Xavi Hernandez has to move aside because Ange is coming, that is fucking class. That is so well, that, good. It, it is in, in Ange Postecoglou's mind. Like he's, what is he? 57. So he's got a good 10 years. He's playing manage, He's playing football in a way that a manager of 37 with no fear would play. And generally that's beaten out of a manager. And maybe that, Maybe that journey that he's taken where it's just been this slow progression to the Premier League, mm. a journey that's never been travelled by any other manager, to him to get to this place. A bit like us as a podcast, of... isn't it? Yeah, in a really. way. Very similar yeah. to us. Yeah. Just sort of yeah. hanging in there. Come on, can people just get what we're doing here? And then off we go. <laughs> I swear, that's what we yeah. are. The, we are the Ange Postacoglu uh, podcast. you want to rank podcasts? Nah, leave it. Leave it. Leave it. <laughs> Done, it? Nah, done I don't want the heat. I don't want the heat. <laughs> don't need that. Um, don't need the heat. Um, so we both agree I'm correct. Good. No, the, the, I, what, what, I just want to go back to what, how I started before we move on. Is <laughs> that, is, in my opinion, from what I can see, and it's all just opinion, you're not the club you think you are anymore. And it's fine. I just I would I would chuck the word currently on there. Yeah, Ratcliffe might do okay. He might do okay, but do you know what happens in eighteen months if Glazers get an offer and they sell? Ratcliffe's gone. So have you heard about this? No. Go so he's, they, they have a clause that in eighteen months, if the, there's a time period to do a bit, um, eighteen months, bid comes in, they sell Manchester United. Ratcliffe has to sell his share. Oh really? Why did um, they do that? 
why what's well, they might get an offer they 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 can't refuse can't can't they? refuse yeah Saudis Aldi, might come in or something um can i just take this moment to apologize last week because i made a quite a passionate rant about klopp and something that he said about uh and i'm sure he's watching this he did yeah. dm me and say look you better fucking apologize so Ooh. i apologize to jürgen klopp is that piss uh Shit. And uh, for say for for picking him up on saying something that he said, I think it was like two years ago. But I didn't realize, I hadn't heard it then. It got resurfaced on social media. That uh, some clubs get to do whatever they want, and I'm like, and my point was that you're actually just holding fuel on a fire that doesn't need to be ignited. Um, because um, Manchester, I went back through Manchester. I don't want to go over this financial fair pair again. And we don't even you don't need to respond to this, Jim. But I went back and watched a video on all of their charges. It's insane compared to Everton. Mad City. They are, they are genuinely, if they get proven guilty, fucked. Like out, kicked out of the league, fucked. Which would be great. Well, like <laughs> for de- me. deceased, fucked. No, 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 not deceased, fuck. I'm Just, like they. I mean, look, right. like, the, the powers of, of the, the prem, independent, fucked. Out of the, I think out of the prem at least. But the, the powers that be, uh, sorry, the independent commission have to have almost unlimited powers in their ability to punish but it's up to their discretion there is no upper limit of punishment they can resi- they can dish out uh, uh, as it stands they by giving a huge punishment that a punishment they would set a precedent that other that, that perhaps would be unfavorable but they have the power to do pretty much whatever they want anyway we'll see uh yeah we had a lot of ffp last week actually um, which people, I was amazed. People, um, they were fine with it. Absolutely fine with it. My uh, Jim Big Laugh Award, um, Celtic 69 said, an 8 a.m. Friday Jaffin. I was already at half mast, but my morning stonker just rose to new heights. Never seen before. 226 likes. <laughs> on <that. laughs> Only on Jaffin. Uh, six replies. Do you know, sometimes I see a comment and then I'll see like eight replies and I go, brilliant. Can't wait. I <laughs> can't wait to see the replies. Uh, New Scorp phone hacking department said, um, if you try to tuck it in your waistband, does it poke out your shirt collar? <laughs> I don't know what, whether that's flirting or just like, you know, bit of co- I don't know. I don't know what it was. 23 likes on that. Um, and then Charlie went, ah, yes. The familiar Jaffan salute. I see you, nice slug. Average Loz said, uh, just finished mine when I saw the thumbnail. The new art style just tickled me enough for a second go. Why not, eh? It's Friday. <laughs> it's just weird, isn't it? It's proper weird. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then uh, Horsebox said, then I realised uh, they were going to talk about FFP for half of it, and I shrunk considerably. Well, we got through it, though. Right? I mean, we have to touch on these things. And I was, I was waiting for a sort of, I was in my rubber dinghy, as you say, and um, people were okay with it. In, in fact, someone yeah, apo- I... someone apologised to you for, for uh, did they? Yeah, some, some uh, a sort of man city a man city fan, I think, I presume, because it was a sort of De Bruyne account. He said, "You know what? I was wrong about you, Flav. I was wrong about you." I do. Get, I do sometimes get that. Like I sometimes get you just he's a fucking dickhead. And do you know what? I even like cards on the table behind the full fall. Sometimes when I'm saying stuff, and I do believe what I'm saying, I'm never saying anything just to be fucking controversial or gain a highlight or whatever that is, right? I wouldn't do that, and I genuinely believe what I'm saying. And there are other times where I'm I'm aiming to wind people up to some degree, but it's always playful. There is a, there's a tongue in that cheek. Yeah, but... um. It's never, you know, that people occasionally come round and they go, actually, he's less of a C-U-N-T than we thought. Yeah. Still one. That's, but... that's lovely. That's lovely. But I can get it. I get it. I get it if people are, are irritated. Just turn off. Not, yeah. not from your channel. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you like <laughs> and subscribe channel. first <laughs> and watch every video after that. Um, by the way, uh, right. So lastly, speaking of which, of things sort of aging badly or good. So I saw this. I think there's a... Uh, as a YouTuber called, I want to say Fiago, I think it's quite a big deal actually, and does shorts and all sorts of stuff. And he did a really good short on um, sort of biggest losers. And I thought, wow, that's a good title. I love that. Um, so I went on to Transfer Market, which is good fun. 
And, and I just say, uh, we obviously have our Patreon. If you guys want to be a part of our mailbags, which we do every week, there's a link in the description. Less than a London pint. Probably less than half uh, some London pints now. I paid day. I paid seven pound eighty for a pint of Guinness. Did you? How yeah. much the Four quid in it. So four yeah. quid. So yeah, so, you you let you you're, you're letting yourself down if you're not a patron. In my in my opinion. Mm. Um. Anyway, so this is interesting. So this is the these are the the players that have lost the most value since January the first, twenty twenty three. So I thought it was interesting to have a little look at it, but then also maybe touch on and the ninth ninth on this list. I, I there's a few on this list I'm absolutely blown away, and it's one where like if you were doing these kind of lists, they would never be in there. Yeah. Um, so we'll get to them, but it's interesting when we talk about say like Chelsea for example. So this is so we've got a few that I can show you. So one is like the percentage of difference of what they used to be valued at. Really good. If you don't know what transfer market is, like you, you're missing out. It's good. Um, but it then good. alongside, you can see on the right the difference in what they were worth and what they are now worth. Anthony, twenty three year old Anthony, is uh, is top of the pops um, with a fifty three percent. His value okay. is cut in half. Cut in yeah. half. Yeah, but that. I, I would say, and this is why transfer market's so good. Thirty-five million is about about right, maybe even too high. The the the, the reality That's is that when game. Anthony, so, yeah, was would like, you pay thirty-five million for him? Like he's got, I think he's probably got a couple of years left in his contract as well, actually. So yeah, he would have done. Yeah, uh, uh, no, not right now. I wouldn't want Anthony for free, but but especially because our options. Well, we paid forty-seven million for Brendan Johnson. So you can't really, it's not like for Spurs, Anthony's never going to be a consideration, but yeah, true. for them to pay 80 million pounds or euros in the first instance, everyone thought was high to come from the uh, Dutch league is, is diff, it's difficult to make that transition. And he, he he's not only, I mean, he's, he's been worse than everyone thought, I think. And um, 35 million is kind. I think it should be less than that. Really. It is an amazing drop off of like, someone like who, I've done a video. I did a video with scouted football who like know their stuff, right? Mm. Kind of came together and went, okay, let's look at some players who could do really well. And I did a video called "Why He's the Next Neymar." <laughs> and uh, it's oh, just... Anthony, Anthony, yeah. Well, well oh, so before he went to Man United, before yeah, when he was at Ajax, yeah. Did you and delete it? I haven't yet. No, I think it's you know you got you got sort of you got to stand by these things sometimes, sadly. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I've had a stinker there. But what, good, video what I, to look back. good video to look back on. <laughs> so what I think is interesting with a lot of these names is, so in a year's time, so you've got the summer window, you've got the last, obviously, week or so of this window. In a, in, in a year's time, will Anthony still be a Man United player? Or will they sell him? And if they sell him, how much do you think they can sell him for? So do you I think he'll be a Man be... United player in a year's time? And say, I'd love get involved, um, guys, in the chat because I think it'd be good for you guys to get involved in. Uh, so I, he, he's he's definitely going to be on Man United's books. Uh, my my guess would be that Ten Hag will be gone. There'll be a new manager. Anthony won't be a part of their first team plans, and probably be loaned out somewhere in Europe. It, he's got to do a lot in order to freeze. It's going to take a lot of. You see it, don't you? you see a club. A, 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 you see a career that started so well that had the right manager and the right setup and the right level. You know, maybe he isn't a Premier League level footballer, but his manager trusted in him in Ten Hag. Um, but he had everything right for him at, at Ajax. And you've seen players' careers tail off when they've made a move that hasn't worked out. Eden Hazard at Real Madrid, Deli Ali when he left. Well, he was tailing off before he left um, Tottenham. But there's examples where this happened. It's going to take a lot. There's also examples where it doesn't happen. Like I'm thinking about Memphis Depay. You would say the same about him when he joined Manchester United. Really flattered to deceive them. Went off and had a decent yeah, career at Barcelona show. and I think was it PSV? I think, or I'm not sure where he went after after United. But, yeah. but my point is, is can, if if Anthony has the correct mental aptitude and his will willingness to get back, because he's on huge money, right? Life changing money now. It would take a lot of drive to for him to um, 
to maybe look past the money and you'd assume I'm just these massive assumptions. Yeah. And find a way back to the form that you saw at Ajax. My feeling is it'll be loaned out, it'll drop down a level and then it'll start to play better football. The I remember doing something for ESPN when they signed him and we, we spoke to this uh, Dutch journalist and I, I, it's funny, I was actually, I was chatting to someone yesterday who did a shoot with a, a Dutch player and he said, and it was a last minute change and the player was sort of Dutch and he said he was so Dutch and I was like, what do you mean? He went just like so dry, <laughs> like so, so dry. And I was like, all right. And it reminded me of this interview with this guy because the, the journalist on ESPN, <clears throat> new signing, Man United, big money. You generally kind of think they're going to go, what a player. This guy, you know, yeah. obviously Brazilian, Samba feet, the crosses he puts in, the creativity he provides. Uh, but in the in the interview, he's kind of just like, um, he's, you know, he's fine. I mean, he's all right. He's not going to like, he's not going to change it much. <laughs> we were like, oh. It's not what you, it's not what you want to hear, is it? Like, but, well, it's certainly... like, especially when it's a 90, like, I got, was it 90 or 80 million? When it's like around that mark, you think, well, this yeah. guy's got to be a game changer. Like, surely, surely. Um, but he obviously hasn't been like what um, I think you're 86 right. million pounds, right? A hundred and nine million dollars. So Ben says he Anthony reeks of the Turkish league. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he does. Ben Abache. Yeah. The total transfer of Anthony, according to transfer market, was 110 million euros. I had no idea. I thought that, it was 80 million euros. Is that with add-ons like still to be paid? That he's never going to get. I would imagine to, maybe to, right? total transfer. And, and Manchester United scouts, as I'm just reading this now, Manchester United scouts valued Anthony at £25 million and they paid 86 Thing is, though, like, he was... Do you know what it was, right? And this is why this is interesting to see these numbers, right? Because, again, he was worth... He was worth 50, 60 million at a push, right? At the time. He was, you know, he's young, exciting, Ajax, you know, exciting Ajax team, played good football... You know, uh, Ten Hag obviously links there, so he's going to get the best out of him, right? Um, so you can understand why they kind of go for it. But they obviously paid like 20-odd million, you know, 30 million on no. top of the value of him, right? So that's what I think is really interesting with this. And Obviously, as we move along, right, you've got Wesley Fofana there, who's had obviously huge problems with injuries. And that, this is the thing as well. Like, it can be form, it can be injury. But if you keep going there, Mason Mount, and Kukureo as well. Makes a man a mix of the two. Kukureo, just general bad form. Yeah. The, Injuries is, is injury. It's going to affect, but yeah. The, that's what I think is interesting. That, that like when you really need a player and he's exciting and he's in good form, you will then chuck on another 15, 20 million for these guys. Kukureo, a great example of that. Yeah. Right? Ten, 10 games in a row of really good form. You know, you add in 10 million to your price. That's a great thing. Right. How many, how many great games in a row? <laughs> does Anthony have to play to get back to a 90 million pound price tag? Because if you think about Rashford, right? And I guess we could go find Rashford, but Rashford's not on this list. Rashford, the, the money he got was from one season. But if you look at his seasons, it's five goals, 11 goals, 19 goals, 20 goals, 19 goals, whatever. And then last year, 30 goals. And so they go, mm. oh, give him the money. Like make sure he doesn't go anywhere because he's worth this amount of money. So there is an opportunity for someone like Anthony to go to Inter Milan and do really well there. And then you kind of bump up your money again. But I guess the problem he's got, he will never be a 90 million pound player again, despite only being 23, because a bit like Memphis to buy, it's a great example. You, once you've failed, once you've failed once, despite like life being about failing and going again, you're kind of always a failure. Do you know what yeah, I mean? you get you, you well, yeah, certainly if you move to another league, your your their opinion of you doesn't change no matter how well you do in that league. Mm. It's weird, like because obviously there's a fishbowl in England where we don't really look outwards. We're generally inside that fishbowl, and we more or less unless you're really into football. So if, if Sancho does go to an Italian club, Roma smells of Roma. Stinks of Roma. Right? Turkey's huge. Someone said that stinks. Bishiktas. Someone said Besiktas. Yeah, that he stinks of Besiktas. But the um it. I mean, to him, it doesn't matter, right? He just got to go out and play football and get his form back. It doesn't matter that it happened at Man United. Wolf Saha failed at Man United and went on to have a good career at Palace. True. Good um, point. And, and where did he end up? Where did he end up, Vlav? Alex Hatterai. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because he stank um, of just, Turkey. Just <laughs> quickly on Anthony, literally. it was 110 was his, his, the total money paid for him, not that 
Man United. So it included his Ajax transfer. Oh, okay, so right, good, good. I misread that. It was 80, 95 million euros the fee for to, to Man United. Uh, Taron says 38 games. Great games. He needs 20 games in a row, says Reese. 100 games, needs, says Ben Bowman. He needs 10, 10 goals, 10 assists in a season, you think. 90 million back to that. I think he needs outrageous he's never numbers. He, oh, yeah, he's, he's, he needs he's, he's, he needs big numbers at Man United. That's the problem. He's, he needs big numbers that he's not capable of producing because they paid too much money for him. Ajax, could you imagine Ajax? They're on the phone, Jim. They're on the phone. Going, burr, burr. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. It's um. Is that Ajax? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that Ajax on the phone? I want him back, dear. Um. No, no. They're going. We, this is before they bought him. Uh, it's Man United. Here. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we want to buy Anthony. Well, you're not going to buy Anthony because yeah. he's been great for us. Yeah. He's really good, isn't he? Jace, he cost he cost so much money for us. You're not getting him, awful. Yeah, I know, but we we really want him. Really want him. Like, let's talk. Let's talk. How much? How much for how, the man? How how does ninety five million euros sound? <laughs> could, you, you could please could you just um hold for a second, please? Thank you. <laughs> Fucking mate, you will not believe this. <laughs> Is it... 90! Yeah, no, no, but darling, book the holiday. It's fine. Hang on. <laughs> um, and add on. <laughs> What's your add on? <laughs> yeah, man, fucking crazy. <laughs> they literally like, what? It's just so stupid. And actually, Man United have kind of ruined his career by putting that. that that's the thing. You, the price tag is such a problem. Like for a lot of these players, like Maguire still can't get away from the 80 million thing. Like still can't. Brendan Johnson is is starting to happen at Spurs because he hasn't really? started very well at Tottenham. He's been okay, but you like that people do. They can't even if intellectually you can remove the price tag from the player. It's not their fault. It's nothing to do with them really. Yeah. But you don't. You do look at him miss an open goal go, that was 47 million pounds we could have spent elsewhere. Yeah. Just do as a fan. The... So if we keep moving, Fafana injuries, but you know for Chelsea, the Mason Mount one sounds like good business now, because he's uh he's, he's dropped, he's dropped about thirty million, apparently. But he's he, you know he's a good player. He will come back. His injuries, it's impossible for him to. Yeah, I think. Right, about, right. I'm slightly confused about thirty thirty five point seven percent drop in mm-hmm. a player who I know he started the season. I don't know how he's been playing recently because I haven't watched a lot of. Chelsea, really? It, it, yeah, it's, we, but, it's had a, I think he's had an all right season for for Chelsea. It's been one of the he's brightest. Twenty nine. Yeah. Is he? So this is as we talked a little bit about this before, Jimmy. Is that how much does the club influence the value of a player artificially? Is he, Chelsea have, an, a, have a history of of having um, the size of the club? I'd, I'd imagine a history of paying a lot of money for players, but also Chelsea as a club of had a massive, massively been underperforming. The mm. status of Chelsea in terms of a top Premier League club has been hit so badly over the last two or three years that that opinion of the club and the where they are currently, does that negatively impact the value of their players? I there's think, four players here. Yeah. Reese James, is value that Reese James is down if, it is else, if it's to do with anything else other than injury is sacrilege. He's the best right back in the league. Yeah, well, I, th- I, I think that's it. I think that's why this is a really interesting list. Because, so, say, like you're saying with Raheem Sterling, like, and, and Kukurea to a point, like, he was kind of on the way up. But if someone pays that amount for you, that becomes your value, like, to a point, right? And that's where you can kind of pick apart this a little bit. Raheem Sterling, I think the, the I don't want to say stat padding because I, I love Raheem Sterling, but being at Man City, where you dominate games and he scores a lot of tap-ins due to his good movement, but he still gets to play for a team that utterly dominates every single game and has Kevin De Bruyne in that team and blah, 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 blah. That will put a 16 mil on, on your price tag a little bit. Although Sterling Sterling went... So what's interesting, Sterling went for about 50, didn't he? But this is suggesting that he's, he's worth much more than that or was worth much more than that on January 1st, 2023. Yeah. So, so that that's... That's an interesting part of it. And also kind of the way yeah. down, right? So Dan James went to Leeds for £30 million. Like if Dan James, Dan James now will not be going for that same price. Is he a better or worse player? It's probably about the same. Oh, so how the, is he playing? I mean, I don't know if I'm honest. Who is like, he playing for? Leeds? Is he still at Leeds? for Leeds, yeah. So like, but the point, the point is, is that you're right. The spotlight means you're going to be kind of more expensive sometimes 
and the form of the team is going to make make you a bit more expensive at times as well. Um, Reese James is an injury thing, obviously. What do you think about uh, Hung Min Son? He's lost twenty mil on his value. He's thirty one. Is that an age thing? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, imagine so. Because well, no, 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 no. I'm look, looking at some of this. These are players that have been out of form last season. I think, or, or not playing. I think Richarlison's impact, it, it, like Richarlison this season, is so much better than he was last season. Who means Son last season was a shadow of himself. Yeah. He had a terrible season. He was rubbish. This season, he's been well. He would have. He, he's been among our best players. But what? 31, 50 million euros sounds right to me. I mean, not that we'd sell him. I think he finished his career at Spurs. But um, 50 million's fair, wouldn't you? That, if yeah, someone yeah. said what Hummin's on's value, I'd say about 50 mil. It's one of those ones. Yeah, yeah if you want to sell him. But he's, I think him and De Bruyne is an interesting one where once you tip over the 30 mark, then it's going to go, yeah. go down a, a solid amount. Uh, I like, would say De Bruyne, I see De Bruyne's value, and, 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 I, and I guess De Bruyne is a better footballer than Son, right? But De Bruyne's style of play means that he's probably longevity is slightly higher than left, uh, Son's. Son's, do you Son think? is like, like what, uh, maybe, I don't know, he's injury. Well, the reason why I say that is because so much of Son's game previously has been about running at pace and trying to beat, beat a defender using his pace and flipping in and out. But, but what what I have seen from Son when he has been a number nine this year is that is he is he did play a lot more like a typical centre forward, which I was surprised by. That said, I think Humin Son at some stage ages very quickly. Do you know what I mean by that? As a footballer, you just suddenly think, "Oh shit, he's old." I do. You know, I think so. so let's say top, wrong, top five leagues. I think Humin Son, and let, let's let's take away the let, there's one year between them or if there is i don't know whatever it's close i think Hummin son will play in the top 5 leagues for and on gen, and also generally for longer than kevin de bruyne i think is that just because he's he's he seems to be injured periodically I, through I, a... I think it's an injury thing i think it might be one where if if he can't run the game the way he runs the game then I think he's one that could just kind of walk away and I think Hunmin Son I think could play as a central striker for quite a long time actually I could see I could see Hunmin Son easily if one's... still being set up forward being 36 and still bagging him in I, I definitely see that I mean he could what, in the Premier League do you think I, I just think I don't know I, I think he people... could definitely go to Germany he could go to Germany now and score 30 goals easy well, he'd just stay, he'd stay in this league and score 30 goals. I think he's... Well, that's what I'm saying. Is that as, he, as he gets older, there'll yeah, be opportunities right. in his top five league. I just don't think... I think you're kind of overplaying the value of pace when it comes to Hung Min Son. I don't think it's actually that important. I think he's technically one of the best yeah. players in the world. Like, yeah. te- lit- I literally mean that, especially as a striker. Like, the composure and the like, elegance that he has in those positions, I think is wildly underrated. And that's why his Great XG is so good this year. That's why his XG is why he, he out, outdoes it so much. So I don't think the pace matters think, really. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling this. I know what his XG is insane over the last five years or something like that. Since, in, since he joined the Premier League, he has like something like a plus 28 XG. Mm. Something mad. But that's like, if you keep doing it, then you're good. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's not like... Yeah, no, of course. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that, that's right? it. I mean, that's what XG is about, right? Is if you're... If you're a striker and you're scoring, you're outperforming your XG, it just shows you how good a player you are. Yeah. And so this is the um, one I think I said at the start. There's Andrew Robertson, ninth on the list. He's lost 20 million in value. He is 29. He has had a shoulder injury. I didn't expect to see how, that. How much football has he played? He's had a... Well, I think, again, it's one where like... Hang on, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> it's one where he... Weirdly, he's not been as uh, flavor of the month. Does that make sense? Because there was a moment there where Trent's cut, right. Trent's playing differently now, and they're thinking, "Oh, do we do we kind of need a Robertson? Like, do we need that player anymore?" And I wonder if that's affected his uh, value a little bit, and maybe. So he hasn't been, but he's been injured. He's, according to transfer market, he's played eight games this season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's started had, I think in thirty. Shoulder. I want to say it's his shoulder. He's had a problem with. Um, but yeah, Casemiro with a 20 mil drop in a season as well. 40% of his. Uh, and so many more. So yeah, so I, I just thought it was an interesting list. I thought it was worth chatting about. In terms of yeah. percentage, just to show you guys, because it, it is interesting if it works. 
Uh, Hugo Lloris, in terms of the percentage what? of his value, has lost the most. Yeah. Kind of makes sense. What was his value, though? It's gone down yeah. 1.5 million. <laughs> well, no, it's gone down to 1.5 million. It was. Right, so it was, it was about six. What? He was worth about 6 million a year ago, apparently. Um, yeah, we left on a free. And then, where's the last one I want to say? Here you go. Biggest, uh, biggest gains. Yeah. Um, have a little guess. Have you What's looked? This is, I was going to tell have, you. I've looked. You can have a yeah. Have a have a guess. Who do you think has gone up in value the most since the first of January, twenty twenty three? So this over Premier this League. year, this year. Well, so January twenty twenty three. Right. So it's kind of like you know a year and a year and nearly a month. Uh. Rashford will be there because he was like considered the best striker in the league. I think in in the beginning at last Christmas, the end, you know, January time. Madison, I want to say Madison will be in there. Okay, a all doggy. Right, so hang on, I've gone. I've gone July here. I've just gone Spurs because that's all I can think of. Sure, but do, let me do. Right, so the top dog, and it's kind of a bit of a cheat, with a, yeah. uh, a percentage of a plus six hundred and forty percent. Declan Rice has been there. Evan Ferguson. Of course. He's worth 65 mil now. 19 year old, 65 mil. Sorry, six, six thousand four hundred percent. He's gone up. This sounds like this sounds like a. I don't want to. I know this is going to sound stupid, but I don't know the answer. Is Ireland does Ireland count as homegrown or not? That's a good question. I think I presume that, that would, so. Although, that would, well, in, we in, are all aware of the political let, situation, but. Some someone will let us know in the uh, comments, but um, Evan Ferguson, if he's homegrown, he solves your number nine problem for ten years if you buy him for sixty five million. Joe, you know I would like to see the one thing I would like to see is him go somewhere where he is not the Hoyland, as in like go be like if say he was at Bayern Munich and he could be understudy to Kane for a year. Like I think I, that would be the one thing I'm nervous about with Ferguson is like too much pressure on him but yeah he's he's amazing spurs 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 you know yeah. why i say that on the study of sun on, on, on number on number nine he's gaping wide sorry you heard it <laughs> i said it i meant it yeah is there is there's a there, gaping there is a, hole there's a there's a gaping wide hole mm -hmm. there's a gaping hole in in tottenham's number nine right because richarlison as as good as he's played this season and last when we played we play uh Fuck, who was our last game? Was it Man United? Don't know. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I gave Richarlison my man of the match. And that's mad because oh, I yeah. thought he couldn't even kick a ball in a straight line Come six months way. ago. Yeah. Come a long way. Um, but we don't have a number nine. And Evan Ferguson, who won't have to play every minute, can learn on the job. We'll have players like Son next to him in a young, exciting team with Postacoglu, who's going to give him a million chances a game. I think I think I it, if if we if we if we went in for him, it's a risk. But I think it's I don't know. I like it. Could it? I'm sure, you'd like, I'm Could sure it? you'd like it. But you'll oh, but you'll pay. That's the thing with the uh, the old Brighton the Brighton lot, which is interesting. Yeah. Like Evan Ferguson, sure they should. Caicedo again. If you think of the start of January a year ago, he's gone up nineteen. He's gone up to ninety million now, which is which is still less than what so Chelsea what? paid for him, obviously. What's um, the metric there then? Is it is it about the transfer value? Because it, the market value isn't about your ability as a footballer. It's about what it, it would cost to buy you regardless, right? Yeah. So it's the fact that he's joined the new club. They've paid a lot for him. He's on a, he's got a really long contract. Yeah. It would, uh, it's just, that's what it is, isn't it? So yeah, exactly. And so like, if you say you want to buy him now, Chelsea would have to take a hit, but you'd still have to pay a little bit of money, wouldn't you? So, or a little bit of money, ninety yeah. million pounds worth. So, and that's it. That's why January first is an interesting one because there'll be a lot of players here who were playing well, but their market value hadn't utterly gone whoop yet. Uh, Hoyland was at Atalanta at that point, so that's why his has gone up, obviously. But again, his market value is, I want to say, is less than what they paid for him. Uh, Jeremy Doku, Colwell, who has obviously played a lot more games, Matoma. So, a lot of Brighton guys in there. Interesting. Mickey van der Ven makes the list. Mickey and, uh, van der Ven. Van der Ven. Mickey van der Ven. <laughs> and also, last thing, uh, percent, in terms of percentage increase, I thought that was interesting. Rico Lewis, Hugo Bueno. He's gone up. Oh, yeah. Hugo Bueno. Yeah. And, and again, another, and look, Brighton, 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 Brighton. 
Oh, fucking mate. good. Did you hear Paul Barber on? Um, he was on on the on Drive on Talksport. Mate, just listen to him talk about football. Paul, he's the CEO oh, the for CEO, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, Brighton. Mm. If you can get it, be a podcast. There isn't a more satisfying listen to him talk about running a football club. Really? It's just he, yeah. He talks in a way that's so clear and concise, and he, and and the way he talks, you can see why Brighton are run the way they are. He's just very clear. The re- they have a plan. And then they have a four, uh, so so they have they had a plan for replacing Basuma. They got Casado in. They had a plan for replacing Casado. They had this geezer in who's I can't remember his name. He's in Believer. playing there. Yeah, and he's said he's very raw. But we see it's just they've got plans for every single thing. Where other football clubs, it's, it feels like, and they have to operate like that, right? Every other football club or, or many other football clubs, it feels like. Fuck! What do we do? They want to buy them. Oh shit! We don't want to lose him. Let's fight and keep him. Whereas Brighton are going, okay, we're well, we're willing to sell. This is the price. Meet it or you don't get him. We'll carry on as we are. Yeah. All right, you've met him. Well, we have a plan. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. Listen to him talk. And it's just Paul Barber on any podcast. He's amazing. And also, do you know, when, when you do sell for a good amount of money, the next guy who wants to buy another one of your players goes, well, like, obviously, I know this is going to cost a lot of money. Like, they're already at, like, a, they already know they've got to hit this mark because they know what the rate is for these guys because you've proven yeah. that they're decent players. Uh, yeah, right, yeah. bit of fun. Way too much football chat, but do you know what? I bloody enjoyed it. Uh, we've got a one-week ban. We've got a few one-week bans. I know you got to go soon, mate. Um, um, we're, uh, we're right, we're right. We can do it. This, this fine, we'll do it. I've got a one-week right, ban. Yeah, uh, yeah. Have you got one, have you? Okay, so what I would say, I, I meant to say this last week, I forgot to. Weird flex. Um, so I'd love to know people's weird flexes so thomas bushel said this uh, question for the pod i was watching the episode of the club not long ago and from nowhere rory hit the weirdest flex i think i've ever heard he says he can create the best whirlpool in a tea slash coffee when stirring it <laughs> and it got me thinking what are yours and flav's weirdest flexes would be interesting to get some of the weirdest flexes out of the slugs too i totally agree thomas bushel well done yeah um, my my one back in the day was I used to be able to spit miles, <laughs> like <laughs> miles. I got a, I got a very specific technique, which I went. I saw go like that, and and I could go. It, it went honestly miles. Um, so that that'd be my weird flex. I could say that. I could also drink. Uh, I've um, got one hot tea. I can drink hot drinks really quickly. <laughs> yeah, I used to think I was good at that, but I think it was just a, a, an illusion I'd created for myself because. Apparently, a thing that I that at home is that I eat my food too quickly and burn my mouth. I didn't realize I did did this, but it as a child, all the time now. now. No, even now, I just I forget to blow and just I'm too excited. <laughs> the, um, Jim, you're pretty good at throwing the old. Uh, what did you just do? I was just you're doing you hoovering your food. That's that's quite a man. Oh, that's a, quite a male thing. Dare I say it? I don't. I like, don't hoover eat, it. Men eat their food way too quick. Mate, my dad is a fucking nightmare. You can't go out for a meal with him because he has to eat. You, you know, he has to have his main meal while we have his starter because he takes so long. Oh, um, yeah, don't, right, you're, right. you're pretty good at the chucking the tea bags in, in the uh, tea from distance, aren't you? <laughs> in the tea bag. I want to, mate. I'm desperate to get. A, I'm just to get the old nine data um, on yeah. video, but you know, I've yet to yet to do it. That's what I'd love to see if someone could do the nine data for me. That would be great. But yeah, we'd love to have your uh, weird flexes in the comments please um don't have to be proud of them i mean it's pretty self-explanatory weird flex uh right one week ban a quick couple of quick good clean funds and a big thanks to uh, mike green who's at port vale first team physio i had a really good chat with him for the ripple effect this week and he snuck in he snuck in a, a good clean fun in the podcast he watched Does he, yeah. the, what is... he, so he watches it on the uh, commute to to the training ground so Does he really? Yeah, so he's just catching what a up. legend. And yeah, so we uh so Mike was really good. Honestly, guys, if you don't check out the ripple effect normally, just check it out for this one because it's really insightful to have he's literally, you know, he's like a kind of like what's the phrase? He's a fly on the wall, like for so much. Like the gossip. And and when I was chatting to him, I was thinking, you've got yeah. exactly the sort of sensibility that I would utterly trust. And you are perfect as a physio because yeah. you probably know way too much. But I, could, I, I feel like you'll definitely keep it to yourself. You know, some people are kind of desperate to tell you like that bit of gossip. I, I felt like he was, he's a great, he had a lovely sort of way about him. He was great. So yeah, Mike, thank you for, for being on the pod. It was really good. Um, 
Mike, quick question. Quick question, Mike. Do you massage the players? I don't think it'll answer now, but I'm just thinking about it. Oh, right. Yeah, who's your favorite? What's your favorite area <laughs> to massage? Uh-huh. <laughs> Do you know that Mike Bassett? That Mike Bassett film where he's like <laughs> going around all the people's injuries and one of them like I think it's Alan. He's going, Oh, he's got a bad he's got a he's got a bad um he's got a bad groin. Oh, knee. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, the knee. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. good clean fun. Here we go. Got a few. Get your good clean funds in. Uh, good clean fund on league edition. Harassing the officials is usually done. This is brilliant. It's usually done by just chance or gestures, but at non-league, some grounds allow free movement of fans along the touchline. My dad, who's a vicar, on multiple occasions has followed up a linesman up and down the touchline, questioning his decisions and shouting Love abuse. <laughs> <laughs> like he's supposed to be like wise, isn't he? Isn't that the thing? No. In front of 2,000 people, I watched my dad, dressed in his vicar outfit, get escorted by stewards out of the ground. <laughs> Not so clean, but good fun. Uh, his other personal favourite oh. chants are if the goalie is in brightly coloured kit, it's like, we can see you in the dark. Or if they are not Jim. in peak athletic condition, have you ever seen a salad? Have you ever seen a salad? Yes. Go on. You called Jim. it. Oh, is he calling it? Yeah. Oh, I did think. I thought you might. I thought you might. I don't want to. I want to believe. I want to believe, but it just doesn't sound true. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, think I mean, we need a picture. I need, I need a picture, need a picture. At the football in the outfit, please. Hold, holding a spoon. Holding a spoon. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, there's there probably loads, loads, loads <laughs> yeah, yeah. of vickers at football. So. Google, yeah, you Google that easily. But yeah, I, Joy, you're right. I've got the same twinge and I think I tried to let Did it you? go because of, cause, yeah. you know, it's, it's not it's not my dad a vicar. Like my dad no. a vicar following the linesman up and down. All, all fine with that. It's, it's him dressed as a vicar getting escorted out. It was there. That's it. <laughs> there. That was there. <laughs> there. <laughs> Jim, can... Yeah, can, Tom Jordan agrees. Lost me at full can, kit vicar. <laughs> a vicar's having sex then, are they? The vicar's like laying the pipe down. <laughs> Well, it's a lineage, isn't it? You got to keep it going. You're allowed to build a family if you're a vicar. What do you mean? I thought what? Hang on, where's, where who gets sworn to celibacy then? Like, at what level do you? How? Why is it the higher you go up in the church, the less sex you're allowed to have? What is that about? I don't know. If I speak, um, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I've had no. Just to be clear, I mean, good clean <laughs> sex. I mean, good clean sex, Jim. Not yeah. Not yeah, naughty right, sex. Right, right. Well, yeah, yeah, of course. Well, I mean, I think it's one where you just got to be married, haven't you? And then you, you can go, you know, and you can tuck in. <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, in uh, it, Jacob Thomas. Oh, yeah, I'm going to name and shame you. I think Jay. I don't know. Do you know it is his name. It is his name. Do you know what I mean it's not like it's? It's not like Vicar One Two Three. Do you know what I mean? It's, that's not his name in this. It's an actual person. Yeah. I mean, he might look. This might th- be completely outrageous from us, and he, and it's all true. I, just I think it's a fair. To... Sh- we needed that's got to go to VAR. Do you know what I mean? If you're like, I need to check it. We just need to check yeah. it. It's one of them. I've got to see it. We've got to see it. I'm afraid. Yeah. Um. We've so, got to yeah. see it. We've got to see it. Uh, Zane said, "Good clean fun." When the new teenage barman tro- drops a tray of glasses on his first day, the whole club shouts, "Way!" Mm, Impossible yeah, not to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 96 King Willie, good clean fun. A player with a known high price tag misses a chance. Opposing fans then shout, How much? Yeah. yeah. I remember weirdly, my, my, it just came back to me in a flood there, being a kid. Mo Johnson signed for Everton, I think, for a fair amount of money. Made his debut against Tottenham at Wyatt Lane. He scored, he missed a one on one. And I remember as a boy screaming that at him. <laughs> really? I think it was Mo Johnson. How I think it was much? Mo Johnson. How much? What a waste of money! <laughs> and a young Flav shouted, "How much?" Yeah. Uh, George, bit of good clean fun for you. I was at Southampton versus Cardiff this year, Cardiff fan, and was right in front, at the front behind the goal. Adam Armstrong scored and proceeded to look me dead in the eye and shush. I was obviously already completely silent, having just seen my team go two 0 down in nine minutes. But I appreciate the good, clean, fun on show. I would lose my mind. People lose their mind with that stuff, don't they? 
<laughs> so done you, George. And Matt, last one. Uh, a bit of googling fun with the football. The collective woohoo that goes around the stadium from both sets of fans when the referee slash linesman slips over. Yeah, that's good. It brings even the fiercest rivals together. That's true. Do you not? Do you never have like to this day? Do you not think like when the whole stadium's going, the referees are wanker, and you're like, no, don't get that. Wasn't it? It's a bit mean. No, not the fuck. I don't give a shit about his feelings. He's just going to go, right, well, I, I, let, let's see how much of a wanker I am. I'm going to fuck this <laughs> yeah. up here. Yeah, yeah. I do, yeah, I do think that's not not helpful. Sometimes as well, like when the linesman's, so I'm in the corner of QBR, and, and sometimes when the linesman's got it utterly wrong and and everyone sort of looks at each other and going, like, result, we kind of got there. Everyone like goes, yeah. like, as in, everyone goes overly well done to the linesman. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. again, you're not really helping there because that's going to kind of like jolt them back towards you know, fairness or being correct. But yeah. yeah, I always stand by the idea that if you are the home referee or linesman, just give the home team everything. It's so much easier. It's just an easier life. Yeah. Um, uh, what deserves a one-week ban? Uh, my good friend, Tom Billinghurst, who, uh, Joe, I'm going to name and shame Tom. Tom is, Tom is the person who, if you have uh, watched the mailbags, you'll know Tom is the guy who went, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> If you know the story, he Spurs he's probably a patron. He is Spurs. He said, uh, YouTube is trying to sell Big Ange to Man United. Oh, snap. Yeah. <laughs> he is a bit camp. Is our Tom. I uh, hope you well, Tom. Uh, Aiden, Ryan Lowe talking. Don't know much about that. Um, oh, yeah. I, <laughs> North East football journalist. <laughs> yeah. So I asked Rachel, what's, what are you on about? She said, the main points, I think, are probably the inconsistency between them and the fact that our starting lineup has been reported to leave at one point or another this window. But that's probably similar with all clubs. Okay. Um, F- Everton FFP chat. Someone put in here. Um, I think fair point is uh, is Troy Deeney. Oh, just take a week. Just mate, take a week, Troy. Just mate, week. he needs. Tough mate, week, he, he's gone. Oh, he's gone from. He's gone from being popular. Like relative. Like when? Do you remember when? I know when the moment this villain was born. Go on. It was when he said that Arsenal don't have any balls when he was playing at Watford. It remember? sort of made his career as well, that though. Would you say? That was, yeah, it was huge for him, but he doesn't know when to rein it in a little bit. Yeah. And like, just on the Forest Green thing, he there's a reason why managers don't give interviews like that, even if they think it, because it's incorrect and you won't get the best out of your players. Yeah. And he was gone. And he was just like, oh, fuck, I'm in a situation here. I'm not going to be here for very long. I don't want my reputation to take a hit here. Let me just bury these footballers. And that just showed you the kind of football, how his brain works. Yeah. Also, he said he had better hold up play than uh, than Harry Kane. That's a good point. Why, why say That's it? Come just why say it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, magic of the FA Cup. Yeah, we can give that a one week ban if you want. The um, sure, I, I'll give my wife a one week ban um, because she's bloody, she, she was bloody born on. Sunday, wasn't she? QPR got Huddersfield. Can't go now. I can't even watch it though. I can't even watch it. Do you know what, what I mean? I think it's on Sky. They've moved it to Sunday. I, th- I presume to be on Sky, right? One thirty. Right. Massive game, right? Huge yeah. win for the boys. We're not finished yet. It's not over. Not We're done. We're still fighting. Two nil victory know? against Mill. No, it's not done. She bloody knows. I saw it get. I saw it got moved because I got all the. You get all the fixtures in the calendar as soon as possible. You go. I'm sorry, love. It's been in the calendar the whole time. Dad taught me that one. And I thought, yeah. okay, we're good here. Don't want to miss that. January as well. Loads of home games. Real chance to get out of the relegation zone. We've currently got 24 points. We've played it. Team's got 27. And if we beat them, we go above them. Huge game. Yeah, it is. And they move it to Sunday. <sighs> well, have, you, have you even entertained the conversation? Or have you just like, I mean, are you have you said, I'm not even going to bring this up because that's what the right thing the husband should how do. On, how on earth do you explain that one? But this is a good, this is good, right? I, 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 I want to hear more of this from, from people listening. Is situations, how have you got out of, have we done this before? Lost it, out. It was lost, the other way around. It was soldiers lost in battle, wasn't it? Soldiers lost in battle. Yeah. Fuck, that was what it was. I haven't thought about that. That was years. great. Man. Sorry, we've already that was, done well, it. That was where is White Teeth came this, from, didn't it? We can bring it back. Can we do that for a little bit, just for nostalgia's sake? Soldiers lost in battle. Sure. Games that you've missed because you were forced to do something you didn't want to do by family members or girlfriends or boyfriends. Yeah. 
which one see that's the thing i kind of i want to have the conversation <laughs> but it because generally for you me, bro- what you can let's, do let's, is go if you, it's the tone of how you say it it's the tone of how you say it a lot of time yeah yeah so yeah. often you go you like so for example and this is why this is the problem with it but also what kind of gives you a chance because if i go if i say to most if people understand the context of like football and everything right yeah, yeah. If I go, but it's Huddersfield Town at home. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's not that's not strong. But I get, no, but, but, but if I say it in the right yeah. way, if I go, but babe, it's Huddersfield Town. They're right above us. <laughs> we need to win. You, I, you could probably <laughs> do it this way. You, you could probably do it this way. You know, you know better than anyone, fam, how bad this has been. And there is a glimmer of hope that something positive is happening at QPR. Yeah. This... This is the start. We're at the embryotic stage. They love that. The embryotic stage. Make it about babies. Make it about babies. Embryotic. So this is the birth of a new DPR. Yeah. And you know that how much we love our child. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember? Yeah, that's a good one. Do you remember giving birth? Giving birth. (laughs) Start there. Start there. Do you remember giving birth, which you did for me? (laughs) I just stood there. But was I there? Of course I was there. I wouldn't have missed it. I was there. I wouldn't have missed it. 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 I wouldn't have missed that birth. Now, now imagine a rebirth, okay? And you know how you know how important QPR is to me. This is essentially a birth that I Second I'll child. be missing. I'll, is that what you want me to? Now, should you yeah. should should the person that was part of your birth be there on your birthday? Of course, absolutely. And you should go to your mother's with Koa. But this is a birth yeah. in itself. Go to and your mother's. I, and I wouldn't be the man I am, the father I am, if I wasn't there at the birth. That's nice. Yeah, this is what I want. <laughs> this is this is the person I am, and this is what you married. Do you like your mum? Yeah. Do you like your mum? Oh, answer the question. Well, Do you like your mum? Yeah. Do you like your mum? Simple question. <laughs> Do you like your mum? Do you like me, mum? And she's like, I know what you're doing. Aren't you? Hey, slow down. Oh, don't get there. Don't get defensive with me. Yeah. Do you like mum? <laughs> Yeah, do you like yeah. mum? Do you like mum? See? see, what do you mean? See, I'm saying I'm not. You're not sure. going in it. Whose this birthday is... is it? Joy, that's joy. Actually, that's a good one, right? Here we go. Yeah, this is good. I go birthday. It's. Do you know what? I I often think with Koa's birthday, I think really that yeah. should be your day. Yeah, really you your share day. that. That's your day. It's not really. It's not really Koa's day because I, I was there. I remember everything he went through, and it's changed our lives for the better. So really, you should be you should be celebrated. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Yes. You, greatest... Would you agree with that? Yes. Right. Okay. So, did you know it's your birthday on Sunday? Yeah. Now, is it really your birthday? <laughs> you know what I mean, is, well, is it also, or is it your mother's birthday? Hmm? You need to do this for your mum. Yeah. Think that through. Yeah, I think you should do think that. Think that through. I think what's best is you, and I don't want to get, this feels like a very maternal thing. I don't want to get involved. I think it's best yeah. if I remove myself. No, look, and I, look I want to be there. I want to be there. Of That's course I want to be there, but I wasn't there. there when you were born. Yeah. Your it's... mother was. She gave you life. Mm. Give her this. Yeah. yeah. I see her. Fam, can I ask you a question? Do you think I'll ever really understand what childbirth's like? <laughs> She goes, Abs- no. no, no, of course you can't. Do you know what? Right. You're right. There you go. You're right, you know. You're right, you know. Um, You're right. So maybe it's best you guys just spend a bit of time together and I'll. Yeah. And maybe, I, maybe I'll just go to the football instead. No, nah, cheers for yeah. that. Oh, that's good. Don't, don't, like, don't even mention the football, Jim. Just go to the yeah. football when she's gone. Yeah. Jim, just, yeah. To know. I just, I don't know. This just feels quite like, a, uh, this feels like a moment. I feel like I'm, I'm spoiling it. I'm just going to. Get in the car. Where are you going to yeah, go? I, I'm just going to get in the car. Just, you focus on yeah. each other. You focus on each other. You focus on each other. I'll be back at five. You don't worry about, you, you don't worry a dot about me. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be fine. No, I don't want to put that on you. Not on a day like today. <laughs> I don't want to put that on you. Not today. Not today of all days. Don't worry about me. I'll be just fine. I'll be, I, you know, I'll miss you. I'll miss you terribly. And you, and you mother-in-law. But I think it's just best I remove myself from the situation. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And I'm away. Oh, yeah, probably won't work. But um, give it a go. Give it a go. Well, how many times are you going to play Huddersfield in the league in your life? And how many times are you going to have birthdays? About the same. About the same, yeah. So. About the same. So, yeah, so it's a toying, a toying class. It's a coin toss. That's a good one as well. I could I'd do that. She go, yeah, about 50-50. Okay, well, let's, let's 
Ta så går jag. Jag ska ju Charles. Jag vet. Det blir amazing. Uh, right. right. Okay, um, great times. Um, good luck QPR. Come on, Marty. I can see it. It needs to be now, though. It needs to be now. Let's move. Move on up. Um, good luck, everyone, this weekend in your respective fixtures. Um, we got we got Man City tomorrow night. Have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. James Madison's back. Is that good? Uh, and I just want to leave you with something I've just heard as we were recording. Okay. Spurs are coming to the closing stages. And this may be bollocks. But Noosa, is he good? Never heard of him. Apparently he's all right. Is he good? Yeah, he is good. He's really good. Oh, so, good. He was in our Wonder Kids video. Available now on the channel. Go and watch it. Have a great weekend, guys. Become a patron. See ya. <laughs>